<laughs> the oldest CPU that can run Windows 11 is the AMD Athlon 64X2, but how does it hold up 19 years after its release date? Let's find out. So the minimum CPU requirements at Windows 11 go all the way back to the 8th gen Intel CPUs, but you can install Windows 11 on even older CPUs using certain hacks, such as using a program called Rufus to remove the Windows 11 requirements when you're trying to burn a Windows 11 ISO to a USB flash drive. Now this YouTuber called Enderman uploaded a video where he installed Windows 11 on a computer with the Intel Pentium 4 661 processor, which was released back in January 5th, 2006, which makes it over 18 years old now. But AMD released one of the first commercial available 64-bit CPUs back in September 2003 called the AMD Athlon 64. Now, the Athlon 64 is a 64-bit processor, but I've heard some people say that it doesn't actually support the right instruction sets to run Windows 11, which were only bought in at early 2005 when the Athlon 64X2 CPUs were announced. So this right here is an old laptop with the AMD Athlon 64X2 processor, and it does run Windows 11. And I'm gonna run this computer through a series of tests and just see how well this thing runs Windows 11. So, it's been a few days, I've ran my tests, and uh, yeah, let's see how good this laptop is. Now, first off is startup time. Now, the startup time on this laptop is just 38 seconds, which is pretty decent in 2024, considering my new computer takes just about that much time. But the startup time is not really relevant in determining the performance of the computer because I have upgraded this computer with basically just an SSD and more RAM to give the CPU its best possible shot. So next is internet and browsing. The browsing experience with this laptop is way better than the other laptop I tested before because obviously it's a slightly better CPU and it's also using a newer version of Microsoft Edge which means that it'll actually support YouTube but the performance is not the greatest. The highest usable quality when watching YouTube is just 480p and even then the website is still very hard to browse when the 480p video is playing in the background. Now speaking of graphics performance, I have tested out a few online games. Now obviously, this laptop is not going to be able to run practically any modern game, and I tested out the few games that most of us would probably play at school. So the first game I tried was Modellin Stunt Cars 2, an absolute school classic. So it took a long time to even load the website, I think I waited like maybe 20 minutes, but this computer did not even make it to the start game screen. Second, I tried a game called Zombs Royale, which is basically just like a 2D shooter game, and you would think it would be very, very light on the hardware. But, it didn't even make it through the loading screen, despite waiting for the better part of 10 minutes for it to load. So, now it's time to start getting really simple, and I tried playing another game called Slope, which is a very basic game when it comes to the 3D aspects of it. And the laptop actually made it to the game, but it was playing at less than one frame per second. Oh my goodness, there's no way this is this slow. <laughs> So, honestly, I was getting a little bit desperate to have fun on this laptop, so the last game that I tried is a game called Run 2. It loaded the website, it made it to the game, but this game also ran at barely one frame per second. My goodness, that's a transition up. It was by far the worst gaming experience I've ever had, bar none. And the entire time the CPU was just pegged at 100%. So now let's talk about this battery. Now the battery on most of these old laptops are completely dead. This laptop, for example, has a battery that is completely dead and doesn't charge at all. But this battery does work. So let's see the test results. Now under load doing the CPU Z stress test, the battery lasts 39 minutes and 8 seconds. Boom! It's dead. And on idle, the battery only lasted about 13 minutes long at 52 minutes, not even an hour. And I think the reason why is because Windows 11 already has so much bloatware and crap running in the background that the processor is just pegged without doing anything anyway. Now when I was doing the CPU-Z stress test, there appears a number which is basically the effective performance of the processor, and the CPU-Z score is an incredibly measly 124. And you can compare that score to 350 on this Core 2 Duo laptop, and 4000 points on this modern 8th Gen i7 desktop with the 8700K. So what about the app support? Now, obviously the app support on this laptop is gonna be pretty terrible. It won't be able to support many programs or games that require or would heavily benefit from the newer instruction sets. So for example, this laptop CPU doesn't have instruction sets like SSE 4.1, which is required to run certain games. And this laptop also has a pretty terrible GPU inside of it. And this laptop has the N-Force 7150M graphics chip. And it's barely good enough to show Windows Vista arrow effects let alone run Minecraft at 64 chunks with the BSL shaders and a 1024 squared texture pack. Basically
Thankfully, this laptop is barely sufficient for even retro gaming, and this GPU, despite having drivers that technically support Windows 11, wow. can't display those Windows 11 elements properly, like transparency effects. So, is this laptop usable in 2024? No. Of course not. And I even tried putting Linux Mint on here to see if it would run better, and it was barely usable even for web browsing, even in Linux. So yeah. Now, before anyone asks, and I know that you will, I tried putting Tiny11 on this laptop, and it didn't really work. If anyone wants to start using Tiny11 as their main operating system for everything that they do, don't do that, because Tiny11 doesn't have MS Defender. So yeah, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Across the